Assembly. So um, this kickoff meeting will have as topic open air on the European stage. Uh, but before I uh, before we start, um, some uh, housekeeping, some rules. So um, the first one is is that if you're uh, if you want to tweet or uh, use other social media for this session for this entire week, actually just uh, make sure to use the hashtag Open Air Week 2020. Um, you will have noticed that you are muted and cannot show video if you're a participant. Uh, that's simply because you're, there are too many of you um, to allow video or, uh, or uh, audio sharing. So if you have a question uh, during, the, during the presentations, feel free to add your question to the Q&A box. You will see this if you hover with your point, pointer of the mouse uh, on the bottom of your screen. You see a Q&A. Uh, it's like two chat balloons. Um, and you can add your question there, and then um, uh, you can also upvote and comment on the questions of others. And uh, this is this will allow us uh, and the moderators to actually deal with your question uh, during Q and A time, so that it doesn't get lost in the general chat function. So please, if you have a question about the content of the presentations, uh, if you want to address a presenter with a, with a question, specific question for them, please use this Q and A box. Um, if you have technical issues, if you want to say hello, uh, or if you want to make general comments, uh, then please use the chat box. Uh, if you do this, this will allow us to actually have uh, to actually make sure that the moderation runs uh, smoothly. Um, the meeting is recorded and the video will be distributed uh, via the YouTube channel and social media. Uh, the slides will be made available on Zenodo and also via our social media, Just so just keep an eye on that. You can also just check the webinar page um, on, open air, on the open air website. Uh, once we have the recordings and slides ready, we will just add them there so you can revisit them. So um, now I will uh, give the floor to Yanis who will do the introduction and present the program. Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to this open session of this uh, open air week. Let's, uh, let's call it. It's a great pleasure to Welcome again, not only the, the nods and other participants of, of Open Air, but also all of you uh, who are not directly involved with the project and, and the efforts, but uh, with um, uh, but, but are interested in, in Open Air. This is uh, a, a, an Open Air project meeting open to the public and, and uh, the need uh, uh, of, of people to participate and attend has been uh, uh, much more than what we expect. And we are really thrilled to have you all with us uh, as we uh, go through uh, what we're doing in open air. In these open sessions uh, uh, today and the following days, uh, you'll get a glimpse uh, and then go into some more depth on, on, on what we are after. So I'll just give you a few highlights of where we stand as, as, as open air. Um, as, as some of you may already know, Open Air uh, has been um, uh, an organization now, it's a legal entity, and 36 organizations across Europe have uh, uh, joined as, as members of the, of the organization. And, and um, many more are applying and coming. So this is a true grassroots organization serving open science uh, serving open air in the context of Europe, and uh, but also uh, uh, way way beyond, and and this organization now is is uh, uh, becoming going to the front, and and uh, um, leading some of the efforts, uh, leading organization uh, projects that the uh, the open air community and the open air initiative is uh, it will be working on. Um, uh, the European context uh, now is changing. It's changing significantly uh, with the maturing of the European Open Science Cloud. And uh, Open Air is working uh, in the European uh, front in the context of EOSC and finding its role and the part where Open Air is leading the developments in the European Open Science Cloud and strengthening uh, um, uh, strengthening our presence, but also bringing what we call bringing the O in, in EOS, the open science. And, uh, 
uh, the, the, the long tail of scientists, serving the long tail of scientists as we've always been doing, will be very strong and, and, and will be uh, helping with that in years, but also the, the, the bigger science, the, the, uh, the, the, the major initiatives at the European level. Uh, open air uh, is, is uh, leading the efforts within EOSC to, to, achieve, uh, to achieve that and become an integral part of, uh, of EOSC. Uh, of course, all this is not done by individuals or organizations. Uh, the network in all European countries is, is uh, becoming stronger and the role of the NODS, the National Open Access Desks is, is instrumental in doing this and you'll hear uh, uh, some experiences and some flavors uh, further down today, actually, but also uh, in other contexts uh, uh, in the rest of the uh, in the rest of the week. Uh, beyond uh, uh, what we are doing at the European level, the international interest and the international connections of open air are growing, are becoming uh, uh, are increasing in numbers and are increasing in, in strength. Uh, uh, quite a few of the participants are not from the European, uh, are not from Europe. Uh, uh, they're coming outside of Europe, and this is great and shows uh, how how open air has has captured uh, the essence of what open science is and what open access is, and, and trying to serve it in, in Europe. And also very strong collaborations uh, with various parts of the world, like in America, Canada, Korea, Japan, and and others. Um, uh, I won't go through uh, uh, all of them, um, uh, where uh, interactions uh, mutual of mutual benefit are, are already in place or are being uh, matured with, uh, with discussions. So strong alliances based on mutual understanding and reciprocity is, is uh, part of the strategic uh, elements of open air and we're moving strongly in that direction. Uh, let me also say that let's not forget open air is an infrastructure and infrastructures are there to offer services to all those that, that uh, uh, need, need the services. And in our case, we are delivering a suite of very critical and robust services, technological uh, and, uh, but also at, uh, at the networking level, training level uh, and um, at the data level, information level, for researchers, for communities, for funding agencies, from po for policymakers, different services for different um, constituents of this, this entire um, community that is around open science and, and open access. And uh, uh, service delivery, reliable service delivery, let me emphasize this, is what sets open air apart compared to some other efforts uh, that are around in, in, uh, at the infrastructure arena and uh, uh, at the open science infrastructure arena. And, and that uh, generates some trust that we, we really feel it in open air and, and we are uh, very appreciative and, and use it as a stepping stone to become even better and serve more and serve better. And last but not least, uh, uh, the one point I want to uh, emphasize is uh, I mentioned is one of the services training. Uh, no matter what we do in other contexts or, or in other dimensions, the human element is the most important. And uh, as we move from uh, older ways of science to open science and having open access as a key element of open science, uh, training the people, training the researchers uh, to, to operate in an open science uh, mindset, training policymakers uh, to see and establish the correct policies, uh, training uh, repository administrators uh, to, to see how they can make the repositories uh, serve open science is a key element and, and open air is, is spearheading uh, this effort at the European level. Training uh, is is, is a big element of the portfolio that Open Air tries to bring to you, and you'll hear about it uh, during the week. Uh, during the week as well. Um, that's that's the gist of, of where we are, uh, where we go, 
and and uh, we could be having this this meeting uh, close up and personal in in a, in, in a uh, yeah, place in a much more beautiful place than, than cyberspace. Um, and and we hope that as soon as possible, we will be having including the open the open sessions. Um, hopefully where we're going to be in, in Cyprus, but uh, uh, you will have a rain check for that. Today is the first day of the open sessions and, and it's, uh, it's uh, uh, bringing uh, a, a, a great set of speakers just to, to get started on this. Uh, and the first speaker is, is uh, an example of the international connections that open air has and, and tries to establish and, and tries to serve with, with, uh, uh, with its uh, uh, interactions and services. And, and we'll hear about from Anna Persic, who comes from uh, uh, UNESCO and will talk about the open, UNESCO Open Science Recommendations. UNESCO is one of the uh, uh, greatest organizations, global organizations uh, that, that helps uh, humanity uh, move uh, uh, move forward and, and open science and, and adopting and, and accepting and uh, practicing uh, open science is, is uh, it, it affects uh, all of us. So uh, really looking forward for, for Anna's presentation on, on what UNESCO has to, has to recommend. And then uh, on the European context, Natalia uh, Manola uh, from Open Air, the Open Air Managing Director uh, will be telling us uh, what is the place, what is the role of open air in, in, in EOS, the European Open Science Cloud, and, and uh, which with all the uh, difficulties in, in getting going, it starts shaping up and open air has a very important role to play there. And we'll see that. And then we'll hear from five national representatives, five uh, representatives of nodes uh, from, uh, from different parts of, uh, of Europe who will uh, give us a glimpse of what it means to be uh, an odd, how, how different member states operate and address issues around uh, open science and open access, uh, what they are doing and how we can move forward. So we have the international context, we have the European context and we have the European member state context. So uh, the plate is full for today's menus and I look forward to, to uh, a great uh, uh, day, a great set of presentations, and I hope you'll enjoy them with me as well. That's it from me. Welcome again. Thanks a lot, Yanis, uh, and uh, I'm very happy to welcome Anna. Anna is the head of section uh, that uh, embarked uh, on this journey to develop uh, UNESCO Open Science recommendations and. Um, Many of you participated in uh, global open science uh, consultations uh, from UNESCO, which uh, Anna and her team coordinated. Uh, you also attended uh, regional consultations that uh, Anna coordinated. And uh, one of the most remarkable examples of uh, collaborations uh, are draft uh, UNESCO recommendations on open science, which are uh, were sent to 193 member states uh, on the 30th of September for um, reading and uh, providing feedback. Um, and uh, over to Anna to tell us how her team did all this great work and what to expect in the coming year. Thank you. Thank you very much, Irina. And thanks to Yanis also um, to everybody for organizing this uh, open session and also for uh, inviting UNESCO. Uh, it's really great to be here because as Irina was saying, we got extremely good inputs from your networks, from the nodes, from the different parts of your community while we were having this global reflection on what open science is, what are the key elements of it, what are the key action points for member states around the world to take into account to ensure that this transition to open science is as fair as possible as just as possible and that it really contributes you know to sustainable development around the world um, <clears throat> as we as we speak now so i'm going to share my screen uh, to tell you a little bit more 
Okay. This should be all right. And just put it in the slideshow. Uh, to tell you a little bit more uh, about the um, the, the process that we have in UNESCO, which uh, hopefully in November 2021 will result in the adoption by the UNESCO member states of what we call a UNESCO recommendation on open science. Um, a recommendation is basically a, a legal instrument that uh, you, an international legal instrument in this case um, that UNESCO can, uh, can do which is not as legally binding as a convention, but it is um, a responsibility of member states to take into account the provisions in the recommendation, monitor, report back to UNESCO, and make sure that they really implement the recommendations which are, which are, which are in the recommendation. So this um, recommendation on open science, the idea of having the recommendation on op open science kind of started uh, around April last year, where our member states started the conversation amongst them about what open science is and how they see open science as a movement happening, not just in Europe, but also in other parts of the world, Latin America, Africa, etc. And they just wanted to make sure that this very positive transition to open science really is positive and really is a game changer for all the member states uh, in, equal, in an equal way. So as I said, in November last year, after discussing a little bit uh, th throughout the uh, last year, um, they have tasked the organization to develop this process leading to a UNESCO recommendation on, on, on open science. Uh, as I said, yes, the recommendations are legal instruments uh, that kind of formulate principles and norms for the international regulation of a certain matter and then invite member states to take legislative or other steps to ensure that these uh, norms and principles are implemented in their countries. Uh, it, is, uh, it really is an instrument that helps uh, influence the development of national laws and practices. So we are hoping that once the member states adopt the recommendation that really will translate into a very very concrete steps to move forward open science in different um, in different countries and in different contexts. But of course, um, to get to the recommendation that hopefully our member states will be able to um, to uh, uh, to adopt in November next year, uh, we had a, a, we have this two year process, which was uh, intended to be a process where we are trying to gather as much inputs as possible from the international community, from the different regions of the world, from the different countries, from the different actors and stakeholders of open science, because we saw very early on that there, is, that there are certain places and spaces where you know, open science is equal to open access or open science is equal to open data. But our feeling from the beginning was that open science actually is composed of many different elements Open access is one of them. Open data is another one. Um, there might be other elements also in there, including this very, very strong engagement with civil society and also with different types of knowledge systems. That can be citizen science. It can be also um, the, this link with indigenous knowledge uh, systems, etc. So our role in this first year of the process towards the recommendation was really, as Irina was saying, to hold this um, large consultations with uh, with uh, different uh, member states, with different actors with, in, different, uh, in different regions. Um, also, we were lucky to set up uh, an advisory committee and we are happy to have Irina Kuchma also as a, a member of our advisory committee. It's 30, 30 representatives um, representing all the different regions, disciplines, and hopefully all the actors as well who are guiding us uh, in the process of the development of the, of the recommendation. And we've also set up an open science partnership, a global partnership, and Open Air is one of our partners. We are very happy about that. Uh, to provide inputs, to guide us in our work, uh, to provide comments as we move along, and hopefully once the recommendation is adopted, to also help us in the implementation of the recommendation. So here you have a little bit of a timeline with this first part, it was the establishment of the partnership, advisory committee, et cetera. 
Uh, and then this whole part of uh, consultations, which kind of finished in September this year, we've managed to produce the first um, draft uh, recommendation, text, rec te text of the recommendation based on the different inputs that we have received. And also thanks to the advisory committee uh, who guided us in the process of, of, of developing the draft recommendation. Uh, the recommendation, the draft text has now been sent to member states and we will share the link. Uh, I'll share the link later in the chat so you can also have a look at it and, and provide further comments um, if you would like to do that. Now, the let's say the, the part of the process is more into looking into the text itself. The first part was really trying to understand globally what people think of open science, what, uh, what are the different elements of it, what are the principles, the values, actions to be taken, etc. The second part is really to comment on the draft text and then member states will actually start negotiating from April on, May on, they will start negotiating the text uh, with the view of adopting it um, at the next general conference in UNESCO in November 2021. So it's a pretty uh, intense process. As I said, it had a lot of different uh, types of consultations. There was this global online consultation, which uh, was launched in March and went on until July. Different uh, regional consultations, national consultation in certain countries, and then also consultations uh, which were thematic with certain actors, let's say, or on certain themes. We also received written inputs, including from open air on, um, on, 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 uh, on the contents of the recommendations. And, and all of that was kind of digested by the advisory committee and the secretariat in producing this first, um, this first recommendation. And I have to say it was an extremely interesting process because uh, as we said from the beginning, open science is really for everybody and by everybody, it's not just open scientist to scientist, it's also opening up more society, science, science, society. And I think with the COVID crisis, um, it became very evident how important it is to have access to scientific information, to have access to data, publications, um, networks, collaborations, to be able to engage with the public, to be able to uh, engage also with science journalists uh, to be able to communicate with the public in a way that is, you know, scientifically um, sound, uh, so that the, the the we can also have this feedback from society um, as well. So, in a, in a way, the the COVID pandemic really has shown the importance and the relevance of open science broadly, and I think to many people it opened their eyes as to you know, open science basically being the science of the future. We call it open for the moment, but it, it should be the way science is conducted um, as, as uh, by default, let's say. Um, I said, yeah, in terms of the, the drafting process, um, we had the advisory committee that met for the first time in July and approved the outline of the draft text of the recommendation, which was really based on what we've received from the different inputs. Uh, I think also one of the interesting points um, in this process was that there was no pre, uh, pre structure of the recommendation that was given to us by member states or by with, within us in the secretariat. We are very open to see how from different inputs we can build the recommendation. So that's why at their first meeting, the advisory committee already approved an outline and then we were working throughout the summer uh, and September building on the, the the feedbacks from the different consultations into actually having uh, the draft text uh, as it was finalized at the end of September sending it to uh, to the member states for for um, in at the 30th on the 30th of, um, of September um, so what do we have in, in, in the current text? Uh, there's a preamble, of course, uh, then aim and objectives, definition of open science. I think for our member states, what was really important from the beginning is to come up with some kind of definition um, that everybody would agree on uh, and that everybody would feel comfortable with. Because what we saw is also, as I said, open science meant very different things for very different people. So I think one of the key objectives of the recommendation really was to set up this global um, framework, global definition of, of open science, core values and guiding principles. And then the most important part I think is these areas of action with action with a lot of different um, 
actions proposed and recommendations proposed under each area of action. And the last part is on monitoring because we all thought that it was extremely important to have um, a chapter on monitoring to ensure that the member states, once this is adopted, also have a framework for uh, reporting and monitoring what is being done in this, in this regard. So um, just to go maybe a little bit more in detail on the aim of the recommendation. So it really is to provide an international framework for open science policy and practice. But what is really important and what was important in the work, both of the consultations and the advisory committee, is that this framework recognizes regional differences in open science perspectives, and it takes cognizance of the specific challenges of scientists and all the other open science actors, particularly in developing country, countries, and that it contributes to reducing the digital technological and knowledge divides existing between and within countries. So I think the the key message from the beginning was that um, we know where we want to get to in terms of what open science is or should be, but the paths of getting there can be very different and of course will depend on where the countries or institutions are starting with. So uh, the idea really was not to come up with like a one fits all um, instruction on how open science should, uh, should work or how we should get there but really to build on what, um, what is strong and what are some of the challenges to address those challenges uh, in different countries and within different communities. Um, in terms of the definition, again, these are all drafts and this can change depending on the comments that we will receive. The open science then refers to an umbrella concept that combines various movements and practices to make scientific knowledge, uh, methods, data, evidence available and accessible to increase scientific collaboration and sharing of information for the benefits of science and society, and then to open the process of scientific knowledge creation and circulation to societal actors beyond the institutionalized scientific community. I think this, and, and it really builds also on the definitions that we already had from the European Union or from uh, uh, like African um, uh, Open Science Platform, etc. So we are trying to combine them uh, into one common definition of um, open science with this idea of having the scientific outputs as open as possible and as close as necessary, of course, uh, mindful of security issues, privacy, respects for subjects of sub study. We're not saying open is open, uh, everything is open, but as much as possible and as secure and safe as possible should be open, of course. Um, we uh, looked into all the different also um, elements, let's say, of, of open science, open access, open data, but also open source and software, hardware, evaluation, open science infrastructures. And you were talking, of course, open air about infrastructures and services, open educational resources, but also open engagement of societal actors and openness to diversity of knowledge. So these are also the additional elements that we have identified from the different inputs and kind of defined uh, within the current text of the recommendation. In, in terms of core values and guiding principles, um, these are many of these principles and values have been mentioned and have been used already in the practices of different organizations, including uh, open air. Um, as I said, I think the, the key of the values really is, was about and is about inclusiveness, equity and fairness, diversity, collective benefit, and then of course quality and, and, and integrity. And I think the whole point was to say that, you know, science is a global public good, um, should be treated as such, and its output should also be treated as, uh, as such. Um, and then in terms of principles, we have the principles uh, such as collaboration, respect, responsibility, sustainability, flexibility, transparency, uh, equal opportunities and, and access. In terms of the areas of actions, as I said, um, a, a lot of work has come, gone into coming uh, to these final seven areas uh, and we are still open to suggestions and improvements. It's promoting a common understanding of open science because even once we have a definition, that shared definition and that shared uh, vision of what open, open science is should constantly be promoted between the, with the different actors 
uh, of open science and between the different regions around the around the world. Um, and enabling policy, developing an enabling policy environment for open science, equally extremely important. Investing in open science infrastructures and services and investing in capacity building for open science. Many of these issues have already been mentioned briefly by Yanis in the opening as well. And then a, a very interesting area of action, which has really been um, pointed to us, particularly by young scientists, is this need for transformation of the scientific culture as a whole and aligning incentives for open science. So we cannot at the same time evaluate scientists uh, only on the basis of, you know, the, the, the journals in which they are uh, uh, publishing and ask them to publish in open access uh, journals or engage with the broader public, etc. So there, there needs to be a, a, a conversation uh, and uh, action in terms of re-evaluating a little bit evaluation systems, uh, rewardings, aligning the incentives for open science more broadly so that there are not mixed messages uh, being sent to scientists who want to engage in open science practices. Um, promoting innovative approaches for open science at different stages of the scientific process. One of the things that we, uh, you will see is, is quite well, I think, captured in the recommendation is that open science practices are not only meant for let's say the end outputs of science, such as you know journal journals or, um, or uh, publications, etc., but it really is at each and every step of the scientific process. So whether it is you know defining of questions, uh, defining of methodology, evaluation, sharing of data, etc. So at every stage of the scientific process, we can apply open science principles and we can open science in that way uh, as well. And then, of course, promoting international cooperation on open science with particular um, emphasis on regional initiatives. And when we say region um, in the UNESCO context, we actually mean like continents, more or less. So Europe, North America, Asia and Pacific, Latin America and the Caribbean, uh, those are Africa. Those are the regions. And there is really need for institutional um, strengthening of institutions at the regional level who can also deliver on open science. So this is um, this is a little bit what we have so so far. Uh, I think what is interesting now in the next steps is that as Irina was saying and I said um, we've sent it to the member states, our director general sent it to the member states. Um, they, uh, they are supposed to send their comments by the end of the year. And then we will produce together with the advisory committee again uh, the second version. This second version will be then uh, shared with member states again sometimes in March. And then there will be a series of meetings where member states will actually negotiate the text. In terms of partners, including Open Air, we are also uh, we will also now be sending um, the recommendation to all the partners, uh, asking for their comments as well. Uh, they will be invited as uh, observers. Of course, there is a representation uh, issue. Not everybody can be in these uh, negotiation meetings, but there, there is a um, provision for inviting observers. So all of our partners are actually also will be invited to the meetings uh, of member states uh, as uh, in, their, in their function as, as observers. But in the meantime, we will also be asking them for comments also by the end of the year so that we can have a have an idea of uh, the feedbacks from uh, the partners and the open science international community and those of, of the, the member states. So if everything goes well uh, by, as I said, uh, August, maybe September next, next year, we will have a final text, which will then go to the general um, conference of UNESCO, where all the 193 member states meet. Uh, they will adopt it and then once the recommendation is adopted we will actually the work will start then because then it will be about implementing uh, those um, different recommendations and actions in different countries and this is also definitely where we will come back to you our partners open air and, and others to help us in the implementation on the national level and also on the regional level so I, I think this is enough uh, on, on my side. I probably went over my uh, allotted time and I'll be happy to respond to any uh, questions that you, you may have.
Thanks a lot, Anna, and you did great. You you kept your time, so no worries about that. Sir. So please, colleagues, if uh, if you have any questions, sir, type them in a Q&A or raise your hand and uh, we'll let you speak. If uh, speaking is faster than writing, um, and I don't see any um, any questions yet, sir. So I guess you were crystal clear and uh, <laughs> no questions so far. So thanks a lot, Anna. Then we'll continue. Oh, there is, sorry, there is one. Yanis, yes, please. Uh, Anna, th thanks a lot for, for giving us uh, the perspective of where you're going at UNESCO. I was wondering, uh, uh, is there any collaboration or coordination with other UN uh, uh, organizations on open science and, and where do you see uh, this going? Would there be one unique from everyone at UN or separate or how do you see this working? So this is a great question. Yes, thank you. Um, so for the moment, what is happening, of course, we have reached out to all of our, uh, you know, sister agencies and the UN system, particularly we are working through this technology facilitation mechanism of the UN, which has been set up uh, for basically implementation of the Agenda 2030. And there is an interagency task team, which brings together all the agencies from the UN, um, who work on STI for SDG, Science, Technology, Innovation for Sustainable Development Goals. So um, part, uh, we have sent them, of course, the, 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 the consultations, and they have been part of our consultations. And we will have actually another meeting with them precisely to discuss this issue of, you know, how do we present it at the level of the United Nations? Because the recommendation is for member states, uh, not it, but it also has implication, of course, for the agencies as such. For the moment, what we see in different agencies, and those are the agencies we've been working with, is that internally we have our, and even UNESCO has it already, huh? a policy on open access, or a policy on sharing of information, policy on open data, et cetera. But these are in internal policies of the organization. Now, the question is how do we communicate with the member states and um, what, what are they going to take on from, uh, from that? And, and this is where a little bit more of consultation has to happen between UNESCO and the other um, UN, uh, UN agencies. But I think in general, um, there is a feeling in the UN system that open science really is one of the accelerators for SDGs. And therefore there is a push for open science across the system. And even the UN library, you may, you may have been part of that conversation. They have also started the conversation a few um, months ago, maybe a year ago, uh, on how do we promote open science across the UN, UN system and across all the different agencies. So we are just picking up on that working together with them and we have to see how we're going to evolve all together in that in that sense but there is a common understanding that there is a transition to open science and that the agencies have to follow uh, and accompany member states to ensure that that transition is as fair as possible and that we don't repeat the mistakes um, from the past uh, Irina if I may come with a follow-up question sure sure yeah uh, as, as Irene, I think, wrote also to the chat, uh, Open Air is working with uh, the UN uh, SDSN uh, global, uh, uh, with, uh, uh, but also primarily the Greek one, but also with other uh, national US, uh, SDSNs uh, in collaboration with, with Global and, and Jeff Sachs. Um, and um, so uh, this is great what, what, what you're saying. Do you see, because these coordinations in, in major agencies usually take time and, and uh, uh, you never know what, uh, uh, is there a timeline in this coordination and how, um, and is there anything that Open Air can do to help through, I don't know, it's, uh, it's uh, uh, interactions with uh, SDSN or anything else that could help you or yeah, I think that that's a great idea, actually. Uh, you know, SDSN is is it, it's it's not a UN agency, right? So it's 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 um so we have been in touch with them, but not really 
we, we did not how to say um, target them so so far. So indeed, what you're saying is great. We could definitely make the connection with with SDSN because that's really like a practical arm uh, uh, that, that basically helps the UN um, uh, implement some practical projects to advance the agenda in different countries and on different subjects. So yes, the conversation with SDSN also on open science and to see from their different nodes or from their different networks uh, how open science uh, recommendation maybe also could be promoted. That's great. But as I said, and, and we can do that relatively quickly um, as the progress of the development of the recommendation is happening. But I think what will be really, really important is that once the recommendation is adopted, how do we accompany member states to actually implement it? And this is where we will need all of your help um, including that of your other contacts, such as SDSN, to really make sure that you know the, the, the right partners in different countries are included and that and that it's happening as it should be happening, including through the collaborations among those who are a little bit more advanced in certain areas, those who are not, those who still need some uh, you know additional assistance, etc. So I think that part, once the recommendation is is adopted, is going to be extremely important um, uh, once we get there. But if, if everybody is already, a, you know, they know what the process is, they understand why it's happening, how it happened, how did we get to this recommendation, that's already very, that's also very, very helpful uh, in the implementation process later on. Thanks, Great, Thank you. We'll follow up. And I see one more question from our colleague Alessia from um, CNR in Italy. Which is the impact of digital divide in um, yeah. sorry, 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 in, 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 in the draft uh, recommendation? How has it been addressed? Uh, yeah, it, 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 it has been very clearly uh, mentioned and put up as one of the challenges, let's say. Uh, the the way it's addressed is to really request member states to progress also in their uh, implementation of uh, um, uh, in, in ensuring that there is connectivity around uh, the world as it as it should be because of course i mean one of the prerequisites for the moment for open science is connectivity and ensuring that the digital divide is not what it is so this is where you know the different um uh, efforts coming also from the UN, different parts of the UN come together because we have several agencies that work really on the digital divide, including uh, from the UNESCO side, but not necessarily from sciences, but from its communication sector. So this is where we really have to put the package on. And if there would be fundings for open science in, um, in certain countries, that funding also has to take into account the fact their connectivity, for example, is an issue and that there has to be um, investment in uh, solving this, that issue as much as there can be into some other components of, a, of, of any given open science project. So I think these are the types of um, you know, recommendations we are giving in the, in the draft recommendation. Uh, but of course, then it's going to be up to the uh, to the countries and the international collaboration to make sure that that happens uh, indeed. Thank you so much. And I don't see any other questions. So thanks again, Anna. And um, I'm handing over to Nigel. Okay. Hi, everybody. So I'm very lucky to be able to introduce Natalia Manala. As you know, she's the director of Open Air. She's based at Athens at the University of Athens. And she's been responsible largely for a lot of the development in open air over the, over the last 10 years and, and longer. She's also on the executive board for EOSC. So she's the perfectly right person to give this overview of how open air contributes to EOSC, uh, what we're trying to achieve there, but also to give those in the audience an introduction to EOSC for those who may, who may not know um, what EOSC is. So the floor is yours, Natalia, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Let me stop my watch. And I'm based now on my balcony in Athens. So uh, greetings to everyone uh, who's, uh, who has uh, taken time to, to join our, uh, our, our open, uh, I didn't say webinar, workshop. 
Uh, so what I want to present, so I have the two hats. I'm, as Najla said, I'm the open air uh, director, but I'm also in the executive board of, of EOSC. So what I will do is I will guide you through EOSC and some of the specific and the technicality. So but feel free to uh, ask any questions. And then uh, we, uh, I will go through the exercise of uh, placing uh, open air in EOSC, the services and uh, all, everything that we do. So uh, the EOSC is the why, the what, and the how. Is you know we're starting with the why. Is uh, the many different whys is for researchers. Why do we need an initiative like uh, the European Open Science Cloud? Uh, why for the policymakers? For the researchers, I think it's obvious because now it's a data-driven research and uh, data is everywhere, and we need to have tools to find access, very fine combine. Uh, data from our own, our own domain, but also from other domains. Um, how, uh, what do we need to do in order to increase this data availability and accessibility? And again, is uh, the sharing. What, what Anna presented very nicely, what is happening around the world, I think uh, Europe is in a very good position, but now we need to uh, somehow structure it in with clear incentives and rewards for sharing. Is this is this is how we need to um, and um, to engage researchers. For policymakers, why? You know, for policymakers, of course, there's the societal and global challenges, uh, cross-disciplinary research, all the funding um, uh, programs, or many of the funding programs now are done through SDGs and the Sustainable Development Goals. So we are trying to solve, you know, missions and, and very high level um, goals. And what we have found now in this data-driven research is that we have a lack of available fair data, which costs uh, Euro, Europe a lot of money. Uh, the Pricewaterhouse report a couple of years ago talked about 10 billion uh, per year. And then uh, what is important is, is we need to bring any and everyone together uh, uh, around these data commons uh, to maintain, for Europe to maintain the position as a global leader in innovation. So this is most of the why. Uh, the, the executive board has come up with this uh, European Open Science Cloud objective tree. And if you will see uh, on, on, the, on the horizontal lines, we have the problems, the barriers, the objectives, and the benefits. And if you think, and if you see, I'm not going to go over it, but if you think about it, we're talking about people, we're talking about data, we're, both, we're talking about infrastructures and how these, uh, how these uh, traverse down to you know, uh, the science, the industry, the society. And this is very important. So the objective, if, if you look in the middle, if you focus in the middle, I'm not sure if I, if, if I show my, my, my mouse, are you able to see the mouse, the mouse over? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, good, thank you. So, uh, so you can see the open, fair and federation are the key, uh, the key um, ways on how to do that. Starting from, you know, uh, linking to what Anna and the UNESCO and the global initiatives are, are, are discussing about and what is our goal for science uh, for the next generation science or science 2.0 or however we want to call it is that we see that for EOS to be successful, openness is, 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 is key. What we're talking about EOS, we're talking about free uh, at the point of use. It doesn't mean that somebody, uh, you know, nobody pays for them. We're talking about uncomplicated, we're uh, talking about intelligent access to data. And by data, we mean mostly, you know, data as research data, publications, they are, uh, they, they are a piece of the data, software protocols, tools, services. So what we so it's very important that when we talk about um, uh, open by default, uh, as open as, uh, um, uh, as, as close as necessary, open but as close as necessary, the goal here is to, to, to have open access as much as we can and open science with what Anna presented as part of the collaborations about as part of linking, as part of discovering resources as, 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 as it concerns on um, utilizing resources. And if I may, 
So, but what is important is that the EOS will only be successful is that if there is enough research and engagement and uptake. And this is, this is one of the key, um, key um, objectives. And this is one of, the, one of the goals that we, I don't have the, the reference here, but we talked with the research infrastructures. The infrastructures and the research infrastructures came last, uh, of Europe came uh, last month together. And we wrote a very short position paper where this was one of the one of our key um, uh, requirements: researchers in the center. So EOSC in the nutshell, I took one of the latest uh, diagrams that has been floating around. So there's uh, all these uh, communities discussing about EOSC core, EOSC exchange, EOSC federation, ROI community. What is the the, the minimum viable uh, product? Uh, EOSC. Uh, so what the community for the past two years with the EOSC executive board and the working groups has been trying to do is we're trying to somehow break down uh, this complex landscape, landscape that we have in, in, in Europe. And we're trying to, to, to put in place all the elements we're trying to prioritize these elements, you know, what is, what is of the utmost priority in order to, um, to implement, how we go about it. The key things here is that the, the sharing of research outcomes and research resources, whatever these are, are important. So you can see publications, data, software, and services is this is, a, this is a how we share. The key, uh, one, of the, one of the important things is that we need to get together as Europe, as European organizations to build on each other's knowledge. We need to learn, learn from each other. The unique selling point of EOSC is that how can we add, have this layer, have this um, initiative that will add value to existing investments. So we're talking about federation. It's not a matter of creating something new. It's not, yeah, this, this is not what we want. Uh, many millions, hundreds of millions of investments have already taken place and are taking, and are, um, they, they happen as we speak. So the idea here is how do we make sure that we bring them together and, and we are all on the same page. Uh, and this is driven by the rules of participation. Uh, so what are the rules that we want to put to our organizations to regulate, not to regulate science, but to regulate whatever this EOSC is uh, through a consensus process. And, uh, and, uh, and in the next uh, five to 10 years, uh, bring piece by piece forward. If we want to deconstruct EOSC, and this is now the open air view from our position paper, is that we see, you know, uh, it's a different view. It's not just the EOSC core or the EOSC uh, uh, exchange. Is what are the key points that we see around? If you start from from here, we have data. So data that is being generated, published, uh, you know, uh, uh, stored, uh, computed, transferred over with a bunch of services. And what our goal is, is to share this data, is to make this data fair and open. So how can we link it? How can we make it uh, 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 you know, as, as best as uh, curated as we want? What kind of services do we need? And what kind of services can we share through this years? And then, of course, what we need to do is we need to have this, this common layer on top where everyone agrees on. So, some of the key layers here is the, uh, the AAI, Authentication and Authorization uh, Framework. We're talking about uh, service uh, management. So how can we expose our services? How can we share our services in a meaningful for the scientist way? And of course, what are the, what are the keys in order, what are the key elements in order to access the data? So how can we access, if possibly, Seam, uh, seamlessly the data or the metadata of what is being produced. So this is so these are the three elements that we see uh, is the, the key elements. So data is is data in its uh, in its broader form. You know, software, publications, uh, uh, protocols, anything that is being used by um, by researchers. Services in the middle uh, in order to uh, handle and manage this data. 
And then this is the this is the access layer. And on top, what you will see is the monitoring layer, which is very important because in order, if you're making, we, we, you know, uh, I, I see that uh, many policymakers are in this uh, workshop. So what we see even at the national EU or even at the international layer is what we need to do is when we have out a policy is we need to somehow monitor uh, uh, its uptake, its uh, implementation and its application. So this is this is the supporting layer is the monitor. So this is this is how uh, open airs is uh, is constructed. Now the executive board and the sustainability group has come up with uh, a bunch of um, key elements, core elements for, for this uh, center core is what is the absolute minimum that we need in order to glue everything together. Uh, I'm not going to go over this, but you can see uh, the, the open science policy framework. You can see uh, the implementation, which is AAI. So we need, you know, uh, researchers, they need to go from one place to the other very nicely, very easily and seamlessly. We see the data access framework. Uh, we see the service management. We see metadata, minimum interoperable metadata framework is how can we share uh, this data. Open metrics framework. So what, you know, the monitoring uh, part. And of course we need to have the, the, the PADs, which is like AAI, one of the very uh, minimal uh, uh, services that we need to have. Security policies and procedures, which is more on um, which is more on the data policy side, and then we need operational support services and web portals. So I'm not going to go over it, but the red the red uh, things are what are the what we need as as part of the gluing mechanism. Okay, and I'm just going over them uh, because then later I will just come to open air and see how we fit into this. Now, uh, EOS, we are, uh, after two plus years, we are in implementation phase. So uh, this is Europe. We're talking about complex uh, um, and somewhat bureaucratic uh, uh, environment, uh, but this is us. Uh, so what we have chosen is a partnership model. A partnership is, uh, in, is, is a mechanism in Horizon Europe uh, that will uh, that is used to deliver global cha challenges uh, through concerted RNI efforts. But the key here, th the key thing that we need to note here is that it's not the European Commission; it's the European Commission, but also the member states or private sector foundations and other stakeholders. So, what these partnerships are going to do is to is uh, provide mechanisms to link um, research and innovation closely to policy needs, whatever mechanism that we need to um, think of, to develop cl close synergies with national and regional programs. I think this is one of the most important. And also to bring together all the stakeholders under one umbrella initiative uh, in a more structured way, okay? Now we have in, in, in Europe, we have 49 EU partnerships that are being formed uh, for Horizon 2020. And EOS, the European Open Science Cloud, uh, is a partnership uh, which is cross thematic. So this partnership, you know, we we are repeating ourselves here. Is you know what will it do? It's going to be build EOS, trusted virtual federated environment, institutional national European initiatives uh, together, co-design and deploy European research data commons, and of course you know the possibilities for researchers to find and use um, all the research outcomes. What is its key objectives? This is what the executive board has come up uh, as, as four very high level key objectives is open science. Open science practices and skills are rewarded taught becoming the new normal. So open science is in the center. Second part, which is again, you know, uh, technical uh, implementation of open science is standards, tools, and services to find, access, and reuse results. And then, of course, is the business model is okay, we're building something, but we are coming together. How, what does it mean in order to sustain and federate what is actually existing? And of course, 
uh, at the end is boosting the impact of EOS through collaboration and alliances. That means that we are, you know, EOS European Open Science Cloud is a European um, is in the European agenda, but it has to be has to have close links with international uh, actors, but also with business and public, uh, which is very important. So this is this is an objective throughout. Um, I think this is my last uh, slide on EOSC. Uh, I will talk just uh, um, what I'm presenting here is, you know, this partnership is not very easy to digest to people who have not been in discussion for these past years. So this partnership um, uh, is going to be uh, operated through a new association. So we're going to have a new legal entity called the ESC Association. We already have it. It's been um, developed since um, since July, uh, end of July to 2020. So this new association uh, uh, will uh, try to do what? One of the first things that they will do is to coordinate and align the strategic research and innovation agenda. I will go over it in my next slide. We'll do monitoring reporting, EOS technical guidance, fair training and communication. So this association, uh, which will have open air, will be um, uh, a member of it in the next round, is, um, is going to be an association to like an umbrella organization overseeing things, I would say. Uh, what is very important in, 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 in the, um, to, to see here in the, in the, in this, um, in the very small letters is that in the text is that the activities resulting from, from, from this, uh, from this work of the, of the association or from this guidance that the association will put forward to the SRIA, uh, will be resourced through commitments by the European Commission and at national level by the members of the association. And this is why EOSC I think is very important is that because it's bringing together uh, member states at a very, I would say official and structured manner in order to tackle the problems, you know, the data driven, the open science, all these problems that we have been uh, uh, encountering in the past uh, years. So this is this is this is uh, this is um, this is how it's going to go. Then uh, now, okay, we have four founding members now. Interest from about ninety. Uh, the process is uh, the onboarding process of new members is 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 ongoing, and then the membership fees. Just uh, putting them down for for uh, organizations that may be interested is uh, ten thousand for full membership, and two thousand for observers. I think. Now, what is the strategic research and innovation agenda? This is something that every one of the 49 partnerships together with the community and the members of the EOS will shape and, uh, and, uh, and uh, try to implement through European Commission money and through member, um, through member state money at the national level. Uh, if you see, they, uh, the, the executive board has identified uh, 14 action uh, areas from, uh, uh, from something very technical like identifiers uh, to something uh, you know, more abstract like user environments or resource provider environments. And of course, if you see on the right, it's about you know, the landscape monitoring, which is something that is very important, rules of participation, now the existing rules of participation is high level. So how can we go to the next, uh, you know, more concrete level? And as Yanni said, is you no know, uh, nothing can 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 really proceed without having a skilled, um, uh, not only uh, personnel at the at the organizations, but also skilled researchers at the open science. So th these are just to give you an idea of what we will be working we as a community and also mobilizing the member states at the, um, uh, in the next uh, few years. Now, uh, open air. So let, let's, let's come and see how open air fits into this picture, okay? Uh, we, have, uh, we are a legal entity with 36 uh, regular and uh, 11 associate members in 24 countries and two international organizations. So how can we see how we fit in, in, in this open science cloud context? So what we have been doing since day one in the past 10 years is that um, uh, we, we are working on, we have three pillars of action, services, policies, and training, okay? 
and I will go um, to each one. I have five minutes left. I will go to each one and say, okay, you know, how do we fit? Coming back to this uh, to this image is that what we see is that open air is uh, has good positioning and good services and good network in order to do um, concretely parts of the data access framework, the KPIs, publishing, um, uh, and also uh, the, the, the research web. And of course, through not just through, um, through uh, the services, but also through the network. This long slide, uh, if you see the EOS score, which is the blue ink, what we have trying to identify is how we can, how we uh, open air contributes to that. And I think we, I, I would say that we substantially contribute. So shared open science policy framework. This is what we have been working for years. This is what the national open access desks are doing. And I think the UNESCO also um, um, recommendations will uh, boost this effort. We are working on a data access framework. So open interfaces for consumers to discover and use, um, and use um, uh, uh, data. Uh, we're talking about a minimal interoperable metadata framework. I will just come in, uh, in, in my next slide. An open metrics framework. We have services like the usage uh, data and the open science observatory, the monitoring. So where we make sure that uh, all this graph and identification goes into there. So as you can see, and then of course, you know, through uh, we are helping the commission and with other players to uh, to support the services and the EOS portal. But our main things are about policy. This is about the data access framework, which I think you know also includes skills and training, uh, the metadata framework, and an open metrics framework. If I come to the guidelines for content providers that we have been working, not by ourselves, but with the community for many years. So you, you will see here that we have the open air guidelines and what are these essentially? They are metadata uh, frameworks uh, for making sure that we can share at a minimal level, touching on a minimal level, uh, that we can share objects and resources around us. So you can see the open air guidelines for literature, the open air guidelines for data, which is an adoption of data science. We have the software heritage. We have the other research project uh, products, quiz systems, and uh, the, the usage statistics, which are con counter compliant. So what I think one of the main contributions of open air in this, in this field not going down into the detail level of the of each community scientific community is that these guidelines can very nicely help for you know be part of the research of the rules of participation for content providers and also be one of the uh, the seed for the metadata um, uh, framework uh, the services now so so this is this is about the metadata framework and the data access so uh, I explained that in the morning in the closed meeting, but I will just go briefly over it again. So the open air services in EOSC, this is a, a big picture, EOSC is in the middle, EOSC is everywhere now in Europe. On, on, on the left side, you have many data sources based on, um, on organization investments already. So through the guidelines and through our provide service, so we offer a kind of a compliance framework to, to, to what we call, you know, uh, we call the open air guidelines and they could be again the seed for the open air uh, for the EOS um, metadata framework. Then what we're doing is through them, we are building the EOS scientific product catalog, not just by them, but also ingesting other sources. But these, these are, these are, you know, this would suffice. And then once we have those, we provide um, uh, services for discovery, which is Explore, which uh, we, uh, we provide services for monitoring and open, up, uh, open science observatory, which could be for KPIs. But also on the bottom here, we provide services, uh, you know, this should be a closed circle, uh, Argos, which is a data management tool, Amnesia, which is an anonymization. And of course, you know, everyone I think knows in order here, which uh, will help uh, researchers or organization use these tools in order for them to publish and in order for them to be, you know, if, 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 we, if you want to use Argos to be compliant uh, to, to, the, to the rules. So 
the, the, this is this is the nutshell where you know where we have been working all these years and where things are converging to years. But if you think also on uh, training of the ERSC, we have uh, which is a very important part. We have the community of practice uh, of trainers. So the, the idea here is how can we facilitate the mechanisms in order to bring trainers together and you know uh, learn from each other and build on each other's um, efforts. Then we're producing open science training material. So you can see you know anywhere from literature repository, data formats for preservation. So I'm, I'm not going to go over this, but this is the, these have been very important and not only important because we're producing, but also because through our network we are disseminating them. And we, you know, you can see the numbers, and these numbers are only for two and a half years. So uh, we have about seventy thousand people who have been trained, uh, who have attended our training uh, uh, events, and this is uh, this is a multiplication effect. And this is why uh, what I would say that open air is a small EOS within EOS. And uh, my last slide is on policies because you know we can we can talk about implementation, but then you know as as Anna um, said is that one of the the key things here is how to address uh, the policymakers and the and the mem and the and the and the states whatever they are in the world in order to do these policies at the high level then at the organization level and so on is uh, what we're doing is we're providing a policy toolkit uh, of templates. We share national strategies as best practices. And of course, we have this monitoring of, uh, of uh, policies and, and uh, I would say now for the implementation and later for policies. So if you look at our Open Science Observatory, now we're trying to get these numbers, you know what each country in Europe has produced, uh, what is you know, the situation in Europe, uh, what is the situation in every country, and not just by the numbers, but also by utilizing uh, the, our national open access desk knowledge in order to put uh, key things like overview, open science policy, infrastructure training support, uh, and statistics. So this is this is this is this is I think this is one of the key services: the monitoring in the observatory and the policy observatory also. This is a key thing in order to just give the small boost to EOS to, to make it uh, go forward. And I think I concluded with you know what EOS is and where open air uh, sits in, uh, in this mm. uh, place. Thank you very much, Natalia. That was excellent. So now we have a bit of time for questions. You can raise your hand, attendees. We have one question, Natalia. I don't know if you can see it in the q and A. It's from some, okay. someone called Katerina Pinto. Okay. Um, and she asks, is there any connection between open air and the new horizon results platform? Uh, is this new horizon, Katerina, is this new horizon results platform? Is this the open research Europe platform? Can Katerina speak? We're looking for you in the, hold on a second. Because if it's Open Research Europe platform, the platform that um, I, uh, the European, com yes, okay. No, uh, no, not Ore. If it's Ore, the Open Research Europe, yes, Open Air is connected by design. So we are in contact with uh, F1000. That has a that has a that is a, the implementer of this platform, uh, and uh, yes, it's going to be linked to Open Air and to Zenodo also. Yeah. Okay, Katrina, I hope that answers your question. Great. Are there any other questions to Natalia? Okay, On EOS? writing. Put your questions in the. Q &A. Ah, okay. Horizon. So Moicha put the Horizon Results platform, the central pillar of the EC funding. Okay. Uh, not sure what I know this is, but Open Air is also connected to the back end of um, the participant portal. So when project coordinators report their research results, they can use Open Air. Uh, whatever we have found, they just click a button and they get it. 
And then uh, if we haven't found it, the commission, we have a direct channel with the commission and we exchange the data with them. So open air and the commission portal, which I gathered them, they are, um, uh, okay. Uh, Daniel is putting some, some information, so we will see. But again, so open air is linked to the Open Research Europe and then open air is linked to the back end of the commission's uh, services. I'm not sure if that um, um, responds to the question because I'm not, I need to look at this platform, the tender. Mm -hmm. Okay, anybody else have any questions to Natalia? On open air, on EOSC? Somebody called Lara has a problem with the audio. So yes, type your question in the Q&A if you can see that functionality. Lara. And I also see Jan is raising, it, raising his hand. Oh, okay. So. Yes, she's yeah, looking at the training, the, the link to the training community of practice. Maybe Jens can ask a question before uh, as, as Lara types. Ah, so can you show me how to start? I think um, the link about training. So maybe I can comment about that. So if yes, uh, uh, this community of practice of training coordinators is an informal group. Uh, we meet uh, every month, usually in the beginning of the month, and uh, that link to a page which I put, include a contact email if you want to join us. Um, and it also includes link to minutes uh, and dates of uh, our forthcoming meetings. So if you meant how to join uh, this community, I'll also put a my email in uh, in a chat and you can email me and we'll be happy to have you and also everyone else who is involved in training coordination. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Irina. So yeah. I think I we think have- Janis to... has a question, unless Janis. he has raised his hands from, his hand is raised from a uh, previous session. No, 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 I, I, I do have a question. So let, let me go ahead and, and ask. Uh, uh, you, Open Air, started with open access to publications. EOSC started as open science uh, and dealing with data. And uh, we all, we in Open Air, let's say, understand that open science requires openness in, in, in all research outputs and in many more dimensions, actually, as Anna presented, you know, this is a wonderful uh, star star shape. Uh, the, is EOSC listening in to uh, uh, the much broader concept of, uh, of open science and, and including not just the, the traditional raw data, but also publications and software and protocols and a whole bunch of other things that involve in EOSC or is it just yes, it does. core data? No. No, I think it's. Uh, I think uh, it does. So in in all the latest documents, it's about all these uh, research uh, uh, results. Uh, uh, so and it's uh, explicitly written now. I think in the partnership in Sri and uh, and everywhere. It's just now a matter of you know trying the community, trying to identify. And it's just as the research results, but all research related resources like services. But yes, it does. Thank you. OK. So thank you very much, Natalia. The slides will be on our portal in due course publicly. Um, so we'll move on to the next part of this session.
um, which is to have presentations from our nat national representatives. We wanted to take this chance to show these different activities. Each member state is very different um, in terms of infrastructure and in terms of how they're starting with EOSC. I mean, EOSC may be a new concept, but of course the infrastructures, as Natalia has said, have been building up nationally for many years and these connections are being made on the ground. So um, we're going to have five different countries and we're going to go through each of the presentations one by one and then have questions at the end to hear about what their priorities are, where they're starting and how they're moving towards EOSC. So I will introduce our colleague, Pauli Asinan. I hope I've said that right, Asinan. First, yeah, Pauli, um, if you can share your screen, he works at the University of Helsinki there in the library, and he has been a NOAD for a number of years, a National Open Access Desk for Open Air, and is very knowledgeable on all things Finnish and Nordic. So over to you, Pauli. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Nasla. Uh, I will share my screen okay. and have it in presentation mode. Now, can you see the presentation mode now? Yes, fine, yeah. Yeah, so uh, as introduced, uh, I'm a National Open Access Desk in uh, Finland uh, with my colleague Kimmo Koskinen. We wo work at the Helsinki University Library at the University of Helsinki. Uh, I was asked to tell about how to realize EOSC in national context I have two slides. Uh, the first one tells why it's not uh, uh, why it's very difficult to talk about national context only, and the other one uh, summarizes uh, uh, my experiences on uh, how to market EOSC. But uh, to start, uh, as we heard. Natalia telling how open air is uh, inside the EOSC, in very deep in, in EOSC. So what uh, information I get from EOSC is uh, mostly coming from the human network of open air. So NOATS and uh, technical persons and so on, and also about EOSC. But uh, as I suppose most of my colleagues, we have different roles and contexts. Uh, Hulip, Hulip is a uh, health university library, and then we have the context of University of Helsinki. Uh, as NOAD, I contact repositories, uh, service providers, uh, also the uh, policymakers and funders. So uh, these, uh, and of course, the other uh, higher education institutes and research in institutes. And probably the most important researchers, especially the coordinators of Horizon 2020 project. My other roles are National Working Group Chair, uh, where we are doing study of marketing of uh, research data management services and that's part of national open science coordination and i'm also uh, involved in uh, eosc nordic project in the work package four which is uh, dealing with fair verification of data repositories and what this means uh, so uh, as you can see here is overlap uh, as noad uh, there there is uh, in EOSC Nordic, there are Nordic and Baltic countries where we also have the, uh, for example, the Estonian NOAD, Lisi Lempinen is uh, working for the same work package there. So as you can see from the connections uh, in different roles, I work with the uh, uh, same persons actually in the, in the EOSC Nordic, uh, uh, Work packets for there. There are also some service providers and repository re representatives from Finland, which are also cooperating 
uh, in the national working group or national co coordination. So uh, this is my message here that uh, enhancing open science, I, I suppose most of us are doing in, in several contexts. Uh, a minor detail here is an, uh, I wanted to pick up with uh, RDA interest group for data discovery. So when we talk about national uh, context, uh, it's not so easy to say what, what's happening. And I'm not sure if it's uh, even important because uh, the summary I want to give you how to market EASC goes like this. And thank you for listening to me. Mm -hmm. I, that was that. <laughs> thank you very much, Pauli. Uh -huh. We'll take questions on your presentation at the end, but that's leaving us with a clear message. <laughs> um, oh. yes. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. And here is uh, greetings from uh, autumn in Finland. Mm -hmm colors of autumn in Finland. So thank you. Thank you. OK, so we move on now to our colleague from Serbia, Biljana Kosanovic, who works at the University of Belgrade. She does many things, but she's also a coordinator of, a Ser of the Serbian National Library Consortium and um, is a great engaging presence in our community. So, Biliana, you, you share your screen and we hear your message. Yeah, yeah. I will try to do this. Fine. Let's, uh... We can see you and hear you, so. Yeah, yeah. Are you see uh, my screen or not? Yes. I just see your screen, yes, fine. With the presentation, I hope on it. <laughs> Not yes, my... yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Good, good. So, um, first of all, I would like uh, to share one of my first thoughts. The only good thing to move from this face to face, very nice, usually very nice open air general assembly, to these Zoom meetings is that I see so many familiar names attending this um, uh, webinar or this event that it is very nice uh, to see all of them and uh, to share with them and um, also to include them um, to our activities and um, uh, to other good things we are uh, um, doing in the open air. <laughs> so I would just um, say a few things about how we are working in Serbia and maybe, maybe this will be the good recipe for the small countries like uh, we are because uh, small countries means uh, you could not engage a lot of people who will working um, on different things. So um, I will go through the different uh, things we are working on. And when you see some numbers here, this is our results. Uh, my background is mathematics, so I am completely depending on the numbers. Um, on the policy level, um, we have our um, national platform, but uh, the initiative for the platform, it will not, it didn't come from the top down, it come from the bottom up. So we are the team of a uh, few of us initiate uh, to the ministry, uh, explain them what the open science or open access and open data are. And if you tell them that they could understand, uh, you have some chances uh, to have in a document. Exactly, you will have to write the first draft, but after that, uh, they uh, 
would like to talk with you. And we succeeded and we have the national platform. And if you have it at the top level, uh, so it is just uh, expand to the institutions. And now we have almost um, 16 uh, institutional policy. All of them are registered in the roadmap and even more. Uh, we now also had the policy of the open infrastructures uh, infrastructure and um, I think this will be the way how uh, the other <clears throat> the other uh, initiatives in um, in our country will um, start working uh, also if in the country uh, we did quite a lot uh, to support uh, in promoting the local content. Uh, that means that not of a lot of journals uh, from mm, small countries are a part of this uh, big uh, national <clears throat> index databases. So uh, I think that the mm, people um, could do quite a lot uh, to make uh, locally produced content uh, to meet uh, the requested of the national infrastructures. So uh, through another initiative, we support journals to become a DOI mm, members, which means we now have 190 journals, but also the PhD thesis. And the main of our product is, of course, um, doing these um, repositories, which we insist uh, to become an open door and open air. And we just a few weeks before we were moving toward the certifications. We, uh, one of our almost the best <laughs> repository from the Serbian <clears throat> Academy of Science, of Arts and Science, uh, they are starting um, to receive the um, core trust, uh, core trust seal. <clears throat> Um, moving uh, toward the EOSC, we also <clears throat> support our researchers of doing science, not just for promote their results, but also for doing science. We are not part of the Research Data Alliance. It was just happened, <laughs> and we are sorry about that, but we will try to become. Uh, but we received some help from the EOSC Secretariat, so, and uh, they are just one project which uh, will work on this uh, research data management. Also, uh, there are uh, some work on open source software because <clears throat> uh, researchers need also software to do it, to work on science. And um, uh, we think that the researchers are suffering from very high APCs. So, uh, and um, with uh, some uh, publishers, big publishers, uh, we negotiate a uh, discount of the national level for the APCs, and we offer that as a service. What does it mean, service? We, through the service, we offer the information. So that, uh, because we do not expect that the researchers were going through all this big list of uh, discount and uh, find this very secret information if the, they have, they, if they are eligible for the discount of the APCs. Uh, and of course, if we are working at, at the beginning of 21st century, some visualization you must have today because the people do not have enough time uh, to read all the data, but if you um, show them, visualize, uh, they, um, they like it. And um, <clears throat> We will continue this um, program we call the repositorization of Serbia. We have, let's say, almost 20 repositories, including, and we also follow those all open uh, initiatives. Um, we are part of initiative for open citations and also the new one initiative for open abstracts. We try to, um, to support and be part of everything which started with open. But our main goals and our key goal is make our researchers happy or make them 
their work cycle easier. They must recognize that uh, we are not doing all this because of ourselves, but because we, we all work this um, because of them, because um, they are our key, key goal. And um, for me, the best achievement is that in the last two years, the team become bigger and bigger. And uh, as you see, there are all the people must smiling, smiling, <laughs> because if they could not believe in this, they could not become a part of the team. So this is the first um, condition they have to satisfy it. Um, so uh, the beginning of this um, unhappy year, we can be formed on the government, formed the team for Open Science in Serbia. I put this very small picture on them because they do not smiling. <laughs> but um, so, and they are not so active, but we will try to boost them and to make them uh, more active. Exactly all these people are part of this uh, uh, tonus of this open science in Serbia. So, and this is my life slide. And uh, I, as I mentioned, visualize is <laughs> always easier to understand and to see the progress. And um, thanks to the open air, to their knowledge and um, on top of that, with all the services they offer to us, uh, this is the picture of how the open science progresses in Serbia. So um, there is a very small steps in 2017 and 18, but look at the 2019 and, 20, and 2020. A lot of this is happening in Serbia, even on policy or even on the services. Uh, or um, the education we offer to our researchers. So this is all from my part. Thank you. Thank you, Biliana. Thank you very much. So save your questions for later. We move on to our next speaker. Uh, really should be our keynote because we should be with you, Sylvia Kukunidu in Cyprus at the university. We should be with you in person today. And I'm sorry we're not but we have you here with us and we can see you. So um, yes, you offer us your insight into what Cyprus is doing and, and building in terms of EOSC and uh, infrastructures or policies. The floor is yours. Can you see my slide? Yes, yes, it's not in presenter mode. Um, if you go down, yeah. Click it again. Speaker mode again. So, um, okay. yeah, perfect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much for introducing me. And uh, I'm really sorry that you're not in Cyprus, uh, but maybe our next meeting <laughs> we can meet uh, in Cyprus. Um, so, as you already know, Cyprus is a small island. So, uh, for sure, we need. Um, collaborations and uh, of course open air uh, was uh, one uh, crucial uh, um, introduction uh, to, to the local uh, uh, ecosystem. Uh, we are working for open air, uh, we are representing open air since 2009 and um, I will try to give you an overview of our work regarding transferring uh, open science and the uh, EOSC vision uh, to uh, the national level. Uh, so just to make a brief overview uh, of the landscape of research and innovation in Cyprus. Uh, in 2019 and 2020, uh, there were critical years for the reformation of the national structure of the research innovation governance system. Uh, so as of uh, March 2020, research and innovation related issues uh, were approached in an integrated and comprehensive manner under the competencies of the brand new Deputy Ministry uh, for Research, Innovation and Digital Policy. And the operation uh, of the Research Innovation Foundation as the executive arm of the system. Uh, we also have the establishment of uh, new institutions and bodies such as uh, National Board 
for Research and Innovation, the Chief Scientist and the Committee of Ministry of Research and Innovation Coordinators. We as uh, NOAA, uh, we're already in uh, close collaboration with the previous appointed national bodies responsible for these issues. So we were continuously trying to be informed for the transformation procedure in order to be able to know who would uh, now be responsible for open science uh, and EOSC issues. Meanwhile, uh, we were glad to be involved um, at one of the infra EOSC 5B projects together with the Cyprus Institute, one of the biggest research centers in Cyprus. And together we work closely for creating national initiatives for, for open science. So among other tasks, um, we are now working together for EOS and fair uptake in communities, the establishment of national EOS promoters in order to ensure demonstration of services integrated into EOS, as well as uh, the understanding of EOS policies, fair data promotion, uh, to set up a comprehensive training material, um, organize events, webinars, uh, training material for various stakeholders, um, including researchers, librarians, repository managers, funders, and um, translate informative uh, material about the EOSC and uh, FAIR, since we believe that uh, um, people are, um, are easier approached uh, when they see material and events in their mother tongue. We contact calls and uh, uh, any necessary actions uh, for um, 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 bringing uh, researchers, uh, bringing the knowledge to uh, researchers and other relevant stakeholders. We are also curating uh, the Open Science EY uh, webpage, and uh, we are in close contact with the repository managers in order to be fully compliant with uh, Open Air. And in terms of uh, policy, uh, as I already, as you may already know, uh, we have a policy which which was adopted in uh, 2016. It was it was. Uh, um, an open uh, access policy for, uh, mainly for publications. Uh, now, this task is again among the management of the deputy ministry that I already mentioned. So by following up with them, we were able to transfer all the discussions regarding the revision of our 2016 uh, adopted policy and, those, and all uh, EOSC related issues to the people appointed for these issues. And uh, among the, long, the last discussions uh, were the future creation of a national infrastructure and funds in order to support open science and EOSC aspects. And the ensurement that the new law uh, for the adoption of um, the PSI directive, uh, uh, the national policies relevant aspects will be included and uh, referred. So we believe in a top bottom approach and um, just to conclude, uh, we also believe that our role as Open Air NOAT, uh, it is crucial uh, in order to transfer knowledge and practices for open science uh, at the national level. So that's all from me. Thank you for your time. And uh, if you have any question, we'll be happy to answer. Thank you very much, Sylvia. Thank you. We have maybe some time at the end for questions, but that was a good overview. Thanks a lot. So we move to our colleague Pedro Principe, Principe who's all smart and I'm sure you know who he is, but I will introduce him. He is the regional coordinator for Region South in open air, but he works at the University of Minho within the library. Um, and has wears many hats and is very active in building open air and in Portugal on the national scene. So Pedro, over to you. Thank you, Najla. So um, I'm going to highlight uh, some of the, um, the activities uh, that um, from uh, the open air NOAD activity or action uh, we did towards the uh, IOSC uh, in, the pro in, in the present. So I will try to highlight um, two initiatives per, per, per topic, let's say, the way that we have contributed to align policies, to synchronize services, and to reuse 
uh, training uh, materials is 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 just a contribution from uh, open air nowad for the development of yosk in in uh, in, in Portugal, because we really believe that this kind of uh, services or this um, this uh, policy alignment and these resources are really uh, a component, a uh, building block of um, the IOSC. And uh, uh, we are sure that the, the Portuguese IOSC representatives, uh, the bodies represent, uh, responsible to represent uh, Portugal uh, in IOSC, are relying, in fact, in some of these open air services to place some of the Portuguese uh, relevant infrastructures to, that are being developed uh, uh, in the recent years um, to place them also in IOSC. Uh, basically, when we talk about the Portuguese uh, repositories infrastructure or the, the PT Chris uh, system or uh, the, um, the infrastructure for open access journals that we have. So, uh, in fact, we believe that are relying on this. So based on the on the slide that uh, Natalia Manola have presented, where we have highlighted the main uh, pillars of the, um, the open air activities, services, policies, and training, I will try to highlight two uh, two actions per uh, per pillar. Let's say um, just to give uh, some examples. Um, it's it's not an exhaustive uh, presentation of all the activities that we we have developed. From the services pr perspective, and uh, trying to have uh, here the the, um, the representative of activities in terms of policy infrastructures, but also giving the point of view of those that are putting into practice the practitioners, I will try to highlight some. So, guidelines uh, alignment is something that we have since the beginning. So, um, uh, Repositories in Portugal in Portugal are compliant with the uh, with the open air guidelines since the beginning, since 2009. Of course, also since some of them since the the driver guidelines that uh, it was before the open air project starts, um, and the, the the provide the services that are available to support the repository managers are also some of them embedded in the in the in the daily workflows um, that the repository managers have. From the policy side, of course, uh, the, the alignment that we have from our major funder uh, and the recent developments that we are doing, uh, not only for open access, but uh, re recently regarding RDM policies. And then I will also try to highlight two uh, main uh, activities, recent um, interesting actions regarding um, uh, training. Uh, a MOOC that we have developed targeting uh, young researchers and um, uh, doctoral students and the, the train the trainer uh, boot camps so let's start quickly with the first highlight um, uh, regarding the services um, interoperability is the key to build open and robust infrastructures we all need those open and robust infrastructure is 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 why portugal want to be uh, quite well represented in this uh, in the development of those uh, open and reliable infrastructures so guidelines are implemented in all portuguese repositories uh, the, the open air guidelines in fact is uh, a mandatory uh, policy uh, for the integration in the national in the national policies to benefit from the services that we have in our um, uh, repositories infrastructure uh, repositories need to comply with the, the open air guidelines itself and uh, uh, there is a strong also alignment with the um, with the, the FCT, the, the, that is our major funder, to to have uh, the projects of FCT part of the information space of open air, and and because of that, we have them also available in our um, ecosystem, in our infrastructure. So, uh, from the point of view of our network of repositories, open air is quite well uh, representative via the the, com the compatibility. Uh, of, of the guidelines but also some of the services that we offered uh, are part of the of, of the workflows via different um, webinars that we have run targeting only the portuguese repository managers the active participation of these portuguese repository managers also in the european community calls uh, placed the the, the the provide services uh, as a real added value to their workflows and uh, the broker, the enrichment events that we have from the broker services available in the provide dashboard, the validator that is important to, to, to test the compliance again, the different version of the guidelines 
are being um, quite well used by our repository managers. And uh, in fact, it's part of, I will not say daily job, but monthly um, activity where uh, in fact they, they are doing that. Um, an additional uh, component uh, of, of our activity is the, the policies, so a, a pillar mm, of the, the open air activity. And uh, here I would like to highlight that since May 2014, our uh, funder, our major funder, have uh, an open access policy that is fully in line with the EC recommendations. And uh, in fact, the, the, the open air NOAD uh, have, have, uh, have a kind of uh, influence uh, this, this, this development as we, we, we are quite well positioned to, to support this. Um, and, uh, and, and recently, uh, we have also contributed, my, my, my colleague Eloy Rodriguez have also contributed directly to the, um, the development of, to, to a proposal to, to, of, of the, the RDM uh, policy proposal uh, that is in fact um, under approval by, by the, the funder board. Um, and we hope to have soon uh, important developments on these regards um, and uh, but 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 uh, uh, there are important um, recent developments uh, regarding uh, for example data management plans in in recent uh, calls uh, from the funder that um, uh, we think that are a very good um, development for the upcoming approval of this uh, pro uh, of this policy and uh, and within this work, we are also aligning with one an additional service that is Argos, that was re recently chosen by FCT for a trial uh, used in support for this policy that has been uh, are under discussing and that is will be approved soon. To finish, uh, two highlights from the on the side of the training uh, services. Uh, the support and training activities in Portugal are are in fact. It, it benefit a lot from what we did in open air, of course, from other important projects like foster open science, but but a lot from what we do, what we did in open air in the last one of the last activities we did was this research data management uh, essentials MOOC uh, that was developed by 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 Uminho as, as an open air NOAD targeting young researchers and PhD students. Uh, this MOOC is part of a national infrastructure of MOOCs that we that our computation unit from the, the Science and Technology Foundation have, have um, to Portugal to offer different MOOCs in different areas to Portugal. And uh, we had one MOOC there uh, uh, sponsored by the Secretary, uh, the Secretariat of um, Science uh, and Higher Education in Portugal. And this MOOC was... Uh, we are quite proud of this of this MOOC. Uh, it was a quite well succeed um, uh, training activity that we did. Uh, we have uh, a big number of registered participants. We were quite surprised with the number of uh, young researchers and doctoral students that we have um, targeted with this MOOC, and uh, and almost uh, 500 have in fact a completion uh, certificate have get. Uh, completion certificate, which uh, we are quite proud of this activity, and several of the, the con several parts of the content that we have in this MOOC are have benefit from the some of the training resources that we we had de developed in 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 open air. To finish, um, uh, the practitioners, so those that are also supporting uh, training activities in different institutions in Portugal. So um, we have uh, run several uh, training boot camps, train the trainer boot camps over the last uh, three years, uh, not only from open air, but also from Foster and from Fit for RI projects. And we have already uh, trained uh, over 50 trainers. And uh, in fact, uh, in the last boot camp uh, that we uh, ran last um, uh, September, we have decided to start a community of practice, uh, a trainer's community of practice in Portugal that in, in fact have benefited a lot from the experience of the trainer, the European Trainers Coordinator Community of Practice that is a responsibility from Open Air. 
and uh, uh, building on uh, relying on this community of practice we are now starting our own our national um, community of practice that we think that will support a lot all uh, the open science developments in, in in portugal okay it's it's all uh, thank you it's just uh, some highlights from the contribution from open air no what to build the the yosk in portugal thank you very much pedro that was a good run through over the many activities so I'm conscious of the time. We have one more speaker who doesn't have slides, but she has very interesting Definitely things doesn't. to say. So Inga van Nieuwerberg. I'm sorry, Inga, I'm sure I've got that wrong. But she is based at the University of Ghent. She is the coordinator for European, um, well, for, uh, for Open Air for Region West. And she's been involved in open air for many years um, and is very knowledgeable on all things open science. So Inga, I think you'll share your face. Um, and because of the time we are going to have after that, a very limited time for some Q&A on all of these issues. And then we will close this session. But I just hope that all of you are not going to disappear and um, we'll carry on in this um, session for a few minutes longer than the time allocated. Thank you, Inga. Okay, hi everyone. Uh, let me share some uh, experience that we have here in Belgium. Uh, I'll just focus on a few highlights because of lack of time. Uh, we are, I am based uh, in Ghent University, so the NOAC for Belgium is in Ghent University, so we have both sides, namely the practical and more the policy-wise, uh, that we address uh, here in Ghent. Um, through Ghent University, we know practically how it works with the repository, how a CRIS system works with, uh, with different interactions, and we see how researchers are working. On the other hand, as Open Air NOAD, we are involved in, in quite some working groups on a national basis um, where we can uh, highlight open air services where we try to connect several uh, stakeholders and uh, get uh, things moving. Now things are moving quite a lot lately in Belgium and especially in, in the region of Flanders, uh, a Flemish Open Science Board has been established and uh, good open science policies are being set out. And uh, through Ghent University, we are part, uh, as you know, as well in several working groups of uh, the Flemish Open Science Board. And um, uh, through this Flemish Open Science Board, we want to collaborate. Because if you see, for example, for EOSC, how many working groups uh, there are, it's impossible as National Open Access Desk to address all these uh, subjects all by ourselves and through uh, the several working groups that we are part of, um, we are in contact with all the experts from Belgium in these working groups. Uh, we are in contact with several uh, projects with Belgian um, partners uh, to talk about uh, EOSC issues and to exchange information. And that is very, very uh, interesting and, and uh, helps uh, a lot in, in getting the information around in Belgium and uh, to collaborate on opinions, on statements and, and stuff like that. Um, because there has been an explosion of working groups, but also of consultations, of things where we have to uh, dedicate some thoughts to and to, to uh, answer questions. Um, and as a group, and I mean as a group of people supporting research in, in, in Belgium, uh, it has proven uh, very important to have these, these working groups. Um, we are also involved as a university in several projects, like EOSC Pillar is another project where we connect to EOSC. But we also try to uh, involve EOSC connection and EOSC um, information in, uh, for example, Belgian projects. So we have proposals going on, proposals now, we hope that uh, we will get in, uh, funding for, where we, um, in very specific uh, in very specific projects with very specific themes, try to incorporate EOSC, um, uh, EOSC integration, EOSC linking, and these kind of things. And it shows us, on the other hand, practically what problems, projects, themes, disciplines can have to address uh, fair principles or to address uh, linking to 
open air, EOSC, uh, these kinds of things. So that's an interesting part. I won't say any, uh, anything more, just uh, wanted to, to address some highlights, uh, but um, my key message is always, as a NOAT, we are very much involved in several um, several projects, several initiatives going on in the country. And uh, if we look at the beginning uh, 10 years ago of being a NOAT in Belgium, and now it, the landscape has changed dramatically. There's lots more collaboration and uh, it's very good to, to be part of such a network, for example, in, uh, in Belgium. So uh, if you have any questions, uh, let them come, I would say. Thank you very much, Inga. That was excellent. Thank you for being on time. Um, we have a few minutes. I see there's one question already in the Q&A to Pedro. I think we have time to answer this, Pedro. Uh, can you see the question? It's about the now MOOC that you mentioned. Um, will it be available soon? Yes, we are just preparing the second <laughs> edition. So by the end of the month, I think we will start the second edition of this MOOC. Thank okay. you, Leonor. Thank you. So that's bringing the end, I think, to the national perspectives and to the whole session. Are there any other Q&A or hand raising? Anything else from anybody? We've had some, it's been a really full, it's been a great session. Many, many presentations. We'll put them all on our portal. Many different themes from the different countries and a great ex, you know, expose of EOSC and overview of, of EOSC and open air from Natalia. So um, please join us again for these public sessions. We have uh, four more during the week. We have a panel, an interesting panel tomorrow from an international and European perspective. We have uh, the provide session on the provide communities. We have more sessions on the research graph and a session about our research materials and uh, materials for researchers that open air produces. So do register, keep, um, keep track of what we're, we're doing, follow us on our social media and do register for our newsletter. I'm going to hand the floor over to Yanis, who will close the session, but take the opportunity to thank the speakers very much um, for an excellent session. And we hope to follow up with, with different webinars on these topics. Yanis, over to you. Thank you. And thank you very much, uh, Nazla. <clears throat> uh, let me also thank uh, all the speakers, all the presenters for making really important contributions and, and showing the continuum that we have from the world that, that UNESCO represents to Europe and Natalia talked about EOSC and on open air, and then to member states, the nods. It, it is a continuum and we see so many uh, uh, common themes that arise in different scales, but also special issues that we have to deal at the member state level or, and, or at the European level or, or at the global level. And, and it's, it's all has to be organic and, and, and well-coordinated. Uh, one, one, one thing, if, if I may say is, is a parting, comment uh, uh, in, in one of her slides, uh, uh, Anna, when, when she was, she gave the definition of open science, she had a whole bunch of things in a star formation. And some of them were things that we, we are used to be talking about, open data, open access, open, open software and so on and so forth. But one of the things that really impressed me and I really appreciate it was openness to diversity of knowledge. Uh, or something like this. I, I can't quite remember, Anna. I hope I'm not butchering it. So uh, openness to that. Um, as humans, as scientists, as researchers, or as society, to be open to all knowledge, to the diversity of knowledge that has been produced. And, 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 and she was talking about indigenous knowledge, something that scientifically is not uh, completely accepted plus all scholarly knowledge and, and, and the, 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 the knowledge and the science and the research results that we know usually as, as we think about it. How can open science is not about to deal openly with the results of the, let's call it traditional science, but also to have our minds open to accept any knowledge wherever it comes from and combine it. And, and this, 
will then will be truly serving the concept of open science. And I think as a society will move move forward. I really appreciated that, and thank you, Anna, and thanks to all that we are all working together in making this a reality. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Anna, and thank you, all our speakers. So, see you in the next sessions. Thank you, Yanis. Goodbye. Bye-bye, all. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Bye-bye.